Hello everybody, I'm JC Wyatt and welcome to the show Visit Brantford. Today we're going to talk about a great presentation, a development idea that I came up with called Brantford Village. Brantford is rich with a great history story. What we did was take the idea of our history, create an incredible preserved village, which we would be able to live and tour and be able to see more about what we used to live in here in Brantford. A lot of our history has started from the year 1638 and has developed all the way up to today. The village was created based around an 18th century village. The village of what we see today is similar to something called Colonial Williamsburg. So one of the roads that we had here in Brantford was called King's Highway. King's Highway was a dirt path that the Indians utilized and they taught the colonists how to use it for transportation and communication. The British did not know about it, and actually the colonists utilized this from Paul Revere and Benjamin Franklin. They used to use the postal system, and it actually used to come right through here through Brantford between Boston and Philadelphia. Our maritime history was founded from a lot of our waterways, our protected coves, and the trees that were grown here very naturally. They built a lot of tall ships, and they built a lot more other types of ships that were here built right along our fronts of all our wharves. One of the greatest ones was a great story that we have here in Brantford called the Jenny Lynn. Jenny Lynn was one of our great ships that still exists today, and it was crashed over on the South Monoese Bridge area over on the Brantford River. So if any of you do drive by this area down here where we have the actual monument for the Jenny Lynn, you will be able to see some of the skeleton of the actual ship. It actually has rotted away, and actually you can see it inside the mud at low tide. So even if you do go into Google Earth and you find the satellite imaging, you could even see it on your own computer. So you're going to learn a little bit more about our history here in Brantford in the presentation. But let's talk about more the realistic of what is Brantford Village. Brantford Village is a preserved village that we would be able to actually not only just tour it, we'll be actually able to live in it. Being able to live in it makes it more of an economic development and a feat for us to be able to be able to bring in tourism dollars and more of all the great things that we want here in Brantford. So what is Brantford Village? It's a place to live. It's a place for seniors and for all of us to call home. It's the preservation of buildings. It's the making of a colonial village into a tourism destination here in Brantford. It is a development that is a low impact to the neighborhood. It is going to create jobs, and it's also going to create a new bittersweet development, a crafter and artisan park here in Brantford. And of course, it is the business plan that will encourage economic development here in Brantford and give us a tax return back to the town. We need these kind of things here in Brantford. We need to remember our history. We need to preserve our history. But we also need to grow and we need to become a better town and look at our economic development. And this type of project would actually do that. We also have our seniors. Seniors would be able to have as a great backdrop here in Brantford a place to call home, a place to work, a place that they can actually show their grandchildren and many of their generations where we came from here in the past. So Brantford Village, it's not just a place for me, it's a place for all of us. It's a place that would be able to learn more about our history and generations more would be able to see our story here in Brantford. If you want to know more about the Brantford Village Foundation, get involved, and to see more about this presentation, please let me know. I hope you enjoy the presentation on Brantford Village. It'll be fun, it's going to be exciting, and I hope you enjoy my ideas and plans to making Brantford a better place preserved on our past. Hello everybody, I'm JC Wyatt and welcome to our presentation on Brantford Village. Brantford Village is a concept design that I came up with about 10 years ago after visiting a wonderful place called Colonial Williamsburg. I decided to learn more about it ever since then and I wanted to learn more about our history here in Brantford. So I wanted to learn more about the history of Brantford and when I did, I came to this beautiful building that we are in right now doing this presentation, the James Blackstone Library. Incredible information that I wanted to learn is where did we come from? What are the types of buildings that we had? Who were the key players? How did we get founded? 
and all the other information that becomes the architecture and the designing and the roads and the history and the family legacies that came from each part of town. As much as I'm a history buff, I hope you are too. So let's start our presentation on Bramford Village. Bramford is an incredible town with incredible rich history. I'm planning to show you a lot of the information that I learned about our history here in Brantford. Brantford Village is a district village, a tourism destination that would be preserved for years to come. Looking upon our one district that we have, which is called Canoebrook District, has 144 historical homes in it. We decided to take some of this information of the history of that actual historic district, expand it more from I-95 all the way to Maple Street and give it its new core, a physical preserved core that people would be able to live, function, travel, tourism, sleep, all of these functions that we want to bring to this town and show people what is the Brantford history and who is and what is Brantford. Welcome to Brantford Village. Brantford Village again is going to be a preserved village, taking our history of our past and giving it more of a selling branding point, finding all the key elements from our history, the key founders, the things that happened on which roads and buildings here in town that might not exist can also be rebuilt and recreated and functioning all over again inside this district. In this district, it would be a great preservation location that will allow generations to come to be able to move new buildings to, take some of our historical structures that might be torn down, we'll have a physical location on where they can go, encouraging colonial type and historic 17th, 18th century buildings to be rebuilt with modern technologies inside with the shell of the outside of the structures on the outside. The other thing that we can do is make sure we, that we have a physical location that says this is the history of Branford. A lot of it today is only in the books upstairs here at the library. Some of this is something you just see in slides or images and I know I would love to be able to go back into those locations and see them and I hope you would too. So welcome to the campaign of Branford Village. The images that you will see in the presentation are drawings, conceptual ideas, watercolors, and types of photographs that I've collected and re-transformed into a presentation that I'm able to show you some of my ideas and plans for this village district. This here is called Brantford Village. Brantford Village actually will have a visitor center. This is the main visitor center. This is where we'll be able to welcome everybody, come in from bus, train, any other types of transportation we can to bring them inside from parking. They'll take the buses back into the actual village. This is the most welcoming building, the tourism building. This is where you can find the history, the models, information, things going on in the actual district. It'll have your ancestry locations so you could come and find out more about where you are and where you've come from here in Brantford and the history of the actual ancestry of all of the families here in Brantford. The next slide that you're seeing is the map, a 1905 map of Brantford, Connecticut. Great part of this map is to show you more of where we have come from in this district, we're going to keep us back at 1800, the 1700 zone is where we're looking to do most of the information on the village. But of course, we've grown up. It's now 2013. This map is of 1905. We were an incredible boom town in industrial location with several factories such as the MIF, the lock works, the village growing. And one thing is, that's where it was in 1905. Let's bring it back. Let's start. I'm going to give you a little bit more history on where Brantford came in the 1700s. We actually were founded in 1638. 1638 by a man named William Swain. William Swain was a, from England. He is from the Wethersfield settlement. They came down with 40 planters and decided to settle this area. When they came in here, they realized the richness of the water being on the river and the great soils for farming. Being able to be a port city was more of where they're from. It can also interest them here. They found and settled on the actual location of where the Center Cemetery is on my main Monoweed Street today and um, the actual buildings or types of huts and the types of 
basic village where they would have created is not existing today, which will should, in my mind, should be built again. But this village is going to show you more of where we're going to go after they've actually settled. Let's bring it back. So William Swain was our main settler. He came now with 40 prenders. He had a son named Daniel Swain. One of the interesting stories about how Bramford Village fits into this idea is this. Daniel Swain, William's son, learned a lot from his dad. His dad was an absolute incredible mind man to physically create and create a town. So learning the types of buildings, types of government, types of how to do it, was taught from his dad to the son. In the district over here, which is down on Monoe Street, Branford would have only had two streets at the time. It would have been Town Drive, sorry, Town Street, and Pig Lane. These two roads were actually the two main streets. The town was divided into several areas from farming. Each person would end up being the settlers of our town. And they would have their own homesteads. They spread it out. We didn't have the town green at the time. We didn't have the main street that we are so used to today. Two roads and a great town creating in this core. One thing that led from Boston to Philadelphia was a dirt path called King's Highway. King's Highway was taught to the colonialists from the Indians as a pathway. The British didn't know about it. The colonialists used it to pass the mail, go between the main cities, transportation and communication, and they utilized that dirt road from Boston to Philly. And guess where it came through here, through Branford. That road actually is similar to what we would think of as Route 1, Boston Post Road. And it actually turned back from Lake Saltonstall down through the main center, came through the Canoebrook District area that we know as Fourth Ward, Main Street area there, and then cut through downtown Bradford and head off through Guilford. That road, King's Highway, was our main street back in the 1700s. 1638, when they were actually settling, they settled the town in 1644. And during that time, William Swain was working with the Indians, learning the incredible man to find out what's going on in the area, was taught from the Indians, was able to work with the Indians. But eventually, as what they've learned and moved forward, he learns everything from the Indians and actually started to do it more his way. And that's the same way it's going to come to Daniel Swain, which I'll go to in a second. What they did is they ended up creating a fence around what was downtown Brantford at that time. They would have had their own little town, village, and farming, and separated it with a fence. And what they did is they wanted to keep the Indians out of their actual area. Very few were actually welcomed in. During that time, by building that fence, the Indians who have been here for many, many years before them was not happy with that, but they wanted to still live and settle this area too, live within this area too. and. They ended up making an agreement. So William and the Matabesic Indians decided to move the Matabesics to what was now called Indian Neck. They utilized that entire area of Indian Neck for just the Indians. The Matabesics utilized that for their new home area between the Quinnipiacs and the Sachem's Head Indians to, us, to the east in Guilford. As we do know, as the another story is, how did Sachem's Head get their name? Is actually when they actually cut the head off of the Indian, the um, chief, and they actually put the head inside the tree, and the tree grew around it, and that's what became Sachem's Head. One thing on our backbone, again, of our history is learning from the father to the son. If you look at today's backbone of the way we went and designed our town, there is a downtown core. We have our main churches, the steeples with all the main town green and stores and the function of an actual town. But down in Fourth Ward, there's another town. It's like a whole other area. That is because Daniel Swain founded that area back after his father. So almost the same thing that's up here in downtown Brantford is also down there as we have a cemetery on, Mon on, Mon on Monroe Street. We have the main village downtown area that would have, and that also would be King's Highway. King's Highway would have been the main settlement and it would have more of the main shops 
the stores and I'll explain that more and you'll see more of the drawings on that later on. But when you look again at this map, the core of this map is actually great because it'll show you from the rivers to the downtown area to the fourth ward area which we now call Canoebrook area down in this area. You'll see the similar of two cities all in one and that's from our founders and we should thank them for that. One thing that you'll next go into is more of our history on the types of buildings that we had too in this area and showing you more of what I've discovered here by learning our history here in Brantford. On Main Street, and if I remember, this is the Hosley Block. It's in 1891. It was actually a large building for this time. Four physical stories with a fifth floor terrace on top. This is where the main Prans and Standard department store was located on the first floor. This is on the corner of Park Place and Main Street where Town Pharmacy and Prosecuity and all that is today. That would be the main building. This building was in a hotel. It's called the Devon Hotel and this location was absolutely superb here on the Bramford Green. We're now in the 1800s. I'm going to just show you some of the structures that we have back in that day too. This one would bend next to it is the Tatucket Hotel at around the same era. This is another one. This is actually where um, it's still on Main Street and Park Place where the bookstore would be today in the Esposito building. This was another hotel structure that we had here in Brantford. Another note to just bring into the history of Brantford, we actually had over 50 hotels in Brantford, which today we have basically none. We have motels, we don't have a hotel. And back in the day, our entire background in history was created on tourism basically vacation, tourism, getting out of the city, coming to our beaches, enjoying our weather, the outside and the outdoor living and lifestyle that was created here in Brentford. And the beautiness of what we have as an outdoor location and open spacing. This again is another picture of the Devon Hotel and the jewelers, this would be Main Street. This is the pharmaceutical and jewelry, that would be basically where Horwitz would have been at the time that we were familiar. And this is the Harrison House. The Harrison House has an also another great story for us to share. When I was looking for information on Daniel Swain's house, and I'm looking around at all the locations in Brantford, I started looking at the actual going to town hall to find all of the landlord deeds and finding out if it was a lean-to building, if it was a colonial, if it had dormers. It has everything down because back in the day they actually did this for more insurance purposes. And they were documented. They're here in the town hall and they've all, it's amazing to see some of these information on the homes that would have been back in the day. Now, again, I'm going back to 1700s, going back to when the Waynes were basically creating the town. It's creating the whole ambiance and story behind what is Brantford Village. And so when I, I was looking at this, the house of the Harrison house, I always was confused on couldn't find the Swain house. So what I ended up looking for is month after month more information on trying to track where was the actual location. I'm looking again down on Main Street between basically Lincoln Avenue all the way down to by home place this today trying to find out the actual structures in Cherry Hill Road and actually discovered back one day, one day I came into the library here and I opened up and asked for the folder on the Harrison house and right there in, in front of us it says it's the Daniel Swain house. So what's actually more interesting is actually finding out that the Harrison house is actually the Daniel Swain house. <laughs> So where it comes from is, it's amazing because that was the actual structure that would have looked similar to this one right here. The, the fathers, our forefathers, our George Watt, the person that founded Branford's son house was the actual Harris house before the second story got added, before the lean-to and the building was transformed into what it is. So the actual information on history brought us back to another core of sharing an incredible story. So this building that we have back in the day would have also been an incredible to share with other people, which we will see down the road is a lot of these buildings that I'm showing to you is part of rebuilding. We're going to rebuild the Devon Hotel, do the Tatucket Hotel again, build this one, the Dan Daniel Swain House, looking to encourage a lot of our history buildings that are gone today to be rebuilt. The core of the shells on the outside of what they were with the right materials that we actually would use back in the day 
but we scan restoring it to today's technology so you'll live inside and today's technology outside is a core of shell of architectural planning and review of creating a better building so creating a building from better perspective of looking upon its architectural details and its its style and making sure that we create an architect review board in this district of encouraging people to use the types of materials that would have been more period to the, that date but again on the inside we use it more of our technology for today look upon all the main fire electrical everything that we need to put inside the buildings on the inner core but the outer scars is basically for us from a visual point of view it creates the whole entire as we I hate to say the word theme park but we use the theme park with bunny ears to physically let people realize more about our history from a visual that you're going to take the photos of and again some of the buildings can be restored from museums shops inside to physical modern or it could be physically back to colonial looking styles from post and beam and the types of architecture and details like just like you see inside this room the amount of woods and the cutout forms and all of the sunken panels and everything that you would see on the inside so again this is a very interesting picture of the Daniel Swain house next to it is also another historical house that we're very familiar and then this is down on Bradley Street on the end of North, mm, North Harbor Street in Bradley. The Her another Harrison house, the Joseph Frisbee house, known as the Red House. This is also a great another house for us to share. This is also here on Main Street. So this is the old Red House. This is Joseph Frisbee house. This would be another structure that we'd also bring inside the core of the actual village. These are again some other shared photos of back here in our history of Brantford. Beautiful old buildings. Usually they're only one to two stories. The building on top usually is with dormers. So let's go into the next slide. The next slide is Brantford Village, a tourism destination, local area, and attractions. Brantford is a destination, and it's also one of the best things about economic development is making Brantford a destination. This is where I find the great story about what Brantford Village is. Wouldn't it be great to see patriots walking down the street, the colonists, seeing the redcoats and seeing the British period also played here right downtown Bramford like it was. It, it was like we had lived through the history of it. Instead of forgetting about it, let's live it again. Let's make a town and a village in this little core area. We're not talking about downtown Bramford. We're not talking about Stony Creek. We're not talking about Indian Neck and Transforming. There's just one specific location in the Canoebrook District, which we call today, is creating a new village district out of it called Bramford Village. It's preserving our past and making it all facts all come together for our future. Horse-drawn carriages going down a main street. We notice on a main street, which again, this would be King's Highway, there is no electrical lines. Everything would be put underground. The buildings would go back to its period. Full functioning retail locations. It could be restaurants and taverns, physical locations and bed and breakfasts, other locations that we would use for historic museums, all in different structures that are now in that area. We can physically utilize one of the locations which we have is through the Richland property. This would also show, which you'll see soon, all of the buildings that were actually in that location back in the day. Again, this is one of the locations here in Brantford Village called King's Highway. This is before, as I was talking about, is the visitor's center. When you come in off the main train system and all of that area, we have a great hub to bring the tourism here and not to not make more stress on our roads. We physically have the bus service that we can start in this area that will bring it right over to the hub. You come in, park your car in the main parking lot facilities, you get on the train, we get on a bus or the trolley system that you'll see soon, and you bramp it and go right to next door into the village district, which would be Bramford Village. This again is the visitor center. Um, I described a little bit more of it. This is more of a walking area. When you walk in, in and you'll see more of the historical buildings down the road that would have been in that location. These are some of the buildings that you'll see again. No overhead power lines. Everything would be put underground, preserving that point, getting the old history, using the old history buildings that we would have back in our day, rebuilding them from a core of the outside shell, physical little coffee shops and hangouts and little, like I said before, little shops and areas to physically learn more about our history and also creates great business 
encouragement. We have different people that be able to start smaller businesses, new ideas, and launch them inside this actual village district. We also bring back to some of our history of the district, showing some like blacksmith, we'd be able to show you like how wigs were created and all the types of facilities that they would have used back in the day in these unique shop types of businesses that we would utilize today. It is a business. It's encouraging people to learn and buy a visitor pass to swipe their systems, to swipe the system in order to vi enter into some of these actual attractions. The actual village would be free. You would be able to walk it. One thing is about the, the uh, main story behind this is we want people to come and visit and hang out and be able to learn how you come tell me your children have a great family experience and again make it a destination location. The actual attractions, of course, anywhere we're going we're gonna to actually have to have a fee. We would be able to back it in just like at any other type theme park. You throw it on to a physical visitor's card, uh, like a credit card, and you'd be able to swipe it into the locations. You pray onto what visit locations are for your card to be able to just like you use a metro card in New York City to go on the bus, you'd be able to utilize it all here on that one system that you purchase for the day. This also is a location. This is an interesting church as I've seen other parishes back in the day that we would think it would be in back in this area don't exist today. So encourage possibly some parish or other types of locations to build within this district down here too. This would be the magazine. This would be actually where the locations would kept some of the gunpowder and the locations of the militia back in the day. This is another structure that I found which would be also great for us to share with everybody. This is the Redcoats and the other people that are guarding and protecting what was before America. This was, again, British power. This was a British location. We were the colonies of British. And it's interesting to see power of our past come back and see it in reality. There's nothing better than uh, in the commercial of living in an actual location. We'd be able to live our history every day. We'd be able to see it in actual street theater and types of events and plays and also types of costuming the types of people that would have been walking around in the area and what they're wearing and the encouragement of all the different things you'll see from farming and a friendly type of atmosphere that would have also been back in the day too. Again, they wouldn't have as much technology. You'll see things like logs. Um, you're going to have a lot more wood and fireplaces back in those days too and we would also encourage that too as you're seeing on the left hand side. This again would be a representation of what King's Highway would be. On the left you're going to see the Daniel Swain house and you'll see other things like the Plantner's house, Black's, um, Blanche's cartway. We also had the Frisbee house. We had one other great building you're going to see shortly. It's going to be called King's Tavern. So this would be an encouragement of bringing an incredible city back to our core of who we are here in Brentford. You don't see Main Street looking like Main Street, not cars and parked on. It's actually an empty street for public people to walk, to see horse-drawn carriages, to feel that culture and that type of experience of being able to walk back in time, literally in five minutes from up here from the center of Brantford. This is another look. You'll see some of the sketches of like King's Highway. You'll see the King's Tavern here is the white building on the right hand side. We have other structures again you'll see from the horse post and the types of structures of people exploring and eventually again on a physical brick walked street. Cobblestone. One thing we talked about a few minutes ago is street theater. Street theater absolutely would make part of the whole entire ambience. It's free theater. You know, pay for this part. We'd have characters dressed up in the actual period, doing their speeches, screaming to become a new America, tired of the British. And this would be one of the fun stages that we would have inside the actual village of Brentford Village, encouraging our children and many other people who are coming here to learn about Brentford's history. And we do have a great history to tell. One other thing I looked upon is the before and after. A lot of the buildings that we have in these areas are great cores to be able to transfer them into. You'll see a before on the left hand side and on the right hand side of your screen is an after. How our buildings of modern technology, what we've used today, the types of windows would be altered back to usually, it's usually 9 over 6 
types of window panes that you'll see back in the day. Um, you see six over sixes in this building on the left hand side. They actually don't use asphalt shingles on the left hand side. We would encourage again back to the um, cedar shingles on that side that we use over here on the wood shingles on that side. Um, again the door systems are a little bit different back in the day and we also have most homes back in the day would have had shutters. So we have an encouragement on the architectural plan to make sure that the types of structuring of windows, the types of cladding, the roofing, the types of signs, the type of shutters, again the type of furniture and the type of encouragement of glass and windows that they would have had back in the day. And again as you see the brick walkway in the front. That's as before and after most people's house look like that. This is something too that would be something similar back in the day that we can encourage architectural changing on um, grants, financial people investing into this location, taking these locations and encouraging them to build to that colonial period and also encouraging these structures to be utilized for so many different uses. It could be a vacation home, it could be a timeshare, it could be a little restaurant, it could be a tavern, it could be a, a little shop, it could be a historic museum, it could be absolutely so many options. This is economic development, it's growth, growing on its history of its past and its story. Again, some more street theater having some of our colonial period leaders be able to again ride on horseback and talk and make speeches here in downtown Brantford, in Brantford Village downtown Brantford and share their stories and help you learn our past. This is other structures again. This is one of the structures um, that would be on a street called Queen Street and this you'll see back in the distance you'll see the custom house to the other side. This is another shared picture we're going to share with you. It's called King's Highway again, as I showed you. Downtown Street, the barrels, the horse things. You'll see the British signs usually open. That's on the signs that will be on the streets. They would have, this would be a typical village look. This is what our King's Highway would have looked like back in the 18th century. So 1700s is a great history. And for me right now, for I'm sharing with you, I feel like we're missing it. We need to rebuild it and bring it back and this is what I'm trying to share and what we should do here in Brantford and hope you all agree. <laughs> the next slide we're going to go into is another great story here in Tide. It's going to be another district area called Merchant Square. Merchant Square is more of a Merchant Square is more of what we would have been used to as Bittersweet Farms, um, sharing a lot of the artisans, the crafters, the technical people who were able to be so artistic and creative here, from potters to all types of types of materials that they would have shown. This encourages me as I went on one of the art tours and seeing people who had created jewelry, incredible artists who paint watercolors, oils, people who sculpted stone and all different types of things. These types of crafters, when I learned and been talking to them for the last year, a couple of years now, is they want Bittersweet Back. They want a location to physically be able to have low rent, be able to provide their services and their start their brand new business here in Brantford and be able to encourage their business to grow on a pace that they need to grow at. A lot of the rents in this district are control based because we would be able to encourage people to want to move in and be able to lose, utilize these locations to increase their type of business, which is again, we're looking for artisans, crafters and gallers in that type of locations. These are the types of core people we have such an abundance of in the area and they have no place to go. They don't can't afford at this time an $8,000 a month rent on Main Street. We want to encourage something that might be $800, $500, $1,000 for a potter to come and make his clay pottery here in Dest, this beautiful area called Merchant Square. See more shared areas. Again, it'll be, again, you won't see power lines. Everything will be underground. Parking will be located underground. It'll be a physical landscapes location that would be of period times. Again, you're seeing a lot of trees. Again, we do have our seasons here, which you'll see our beautiful old trees and elms all barren in this area. <coughs> this would be like the crafter's house. Other types of locations that we'd have are salt boxes and beautiful retail stores. This is another encouragement actually building I'm going to show you in a few minutes. This is actually the Folk Art Building, the Folk Art Museum. Also encouraging smaller hotels, 
the people who want to open up in this type of area would be great. We, we, we don't have, as we said before, hotels. We are looking to encourage people who want to become a business owner here in Brentford to open up a brand new business for them to go into the in-business bed and breakfast, be able to encourage them to go into hospitality. That is an incredible economic development defeat for us to physically bring in one of our lowest scoring type of business in town to encourage it to be one of the most encouraged thing that we wish to bring to the town of Brantford. This is um, Governor's Inn. This is another drawing that we have. This would be a lot of the location. Again, you'll see in colonial buildings, again, with shutters and beautiful landscaping. This is another piece that we are coming down to the visitor center. This is showing again some of the colonial buildings that I was sharing with you before. Again, most of them have step stones that you go up inside the actual structure, the brick, physicals, they would have more cellars. They had also again, most of them are just so tight, they're actually more together located and they, these buildings just absolutely just form great, beautiful pictures and photographs, the architecture of that day. Here's another photograph again of what we would encourage to be called King's Highway. Again, you're going to see a lot more log and wood that we, they would have used back in the day. You have your cobblestone streets and began beautiful old colonial buildings. This again to us, if you were so describing before, say Richland, that road here on Main Street, this is encouraging that district to become a beautiful tourism location of colonial buildings of that date period that actually were there at that time. We talked a few minutes ago about the visitor center. This is the bus depot. Um, one thing that you may have realized in my exploring of this town and trying to encourage new growth and know more about what we can do and move our town forward is creating a bus service. It's one of the best things that I think we need to start looking into. A lot of people don't drive. A lot of people who want to come here don't have a place to park. And we solve that by physically building in a bus service. Physical locations where buses are dropping off people, taking people back and forth where they need to go after they get to the location they need to drop off their car, come in by train, or other major buses that could come in, they would be able to be linked into this one area by our bus services. So they could physically go to Stony Creek, they can go to wherever they wish to go, but this will encourage people to visit Brantford Village and physically take the bus here, taking the train here, taking their car, parking at the visitor center, leaving it there, and taking the buses around town and using their passes again for the tourism and transportation system that we would be providing here in town. One thing we're going to go back into, many people, who's going to pay for all this? <laughs> it might be a question people are going to think about. This would be so privately invested, um, town can get also involved, but these are for private investors to look upon selling this plan. So if somebody's paying or buying the bus service for us, so some, they're, they're going to be making money off their services. It's just like we're not paying for it just because it's coming to Brantford. This is encouraging people to move into that level of economic development and building a location that we want to see, you want to see, I want to see. I think this is more of a what I would want in my backyard. It is, uh, I used to say many times is the reason Stony Creek um, doesn't like development is because they haven't seen anything they like. <laughs> so we need to show Brantford things that you would like. Uh, from learning from my history and talking to many, many people in town and seeing our history, why forget it? Let's rebuild it. Let's show it. Let's make it be part of our core of who we are. And again, to me, that is what is our future. And I think that we should be encouraging buildings, but buildings, maybe not the box stores. We need to encourage this colonial village type of architecture. It works. It's what we would want to see. And I encouraging, and you said in this slide, a bus service. It's absolutely a destination location when you can physically hop on a bus and go wherever you need to go inside the district. Again, we were talking about street theater before. There would be great things you see again as a lot of people in our costumes, the period back in the day, sharing their lives, communicating with each other, the basics of life seen here in this photograph. Great horse corn carriage too. Again, encouraging architecture to stay to period. These are the types of things that we have in this shot of a home. It's made very modern, <laughs> but this is actually built in almost the year 2000. But that looks like it's based in the year 1700s, the 17 period, like I said, 18th century period that we're trying to 
expand and make part of this area. One other great part of this district that we have in Brent Village is called the Seaport. This is a great drawing of the actual seaport and it shows you more of where the types of colonial maritimes that we came in here in Brantford. This will share you some of the districts from this will share some of our shipbuilding, where we had many of our tall ships that would have been built here. Brantford has an incredible maritime center area that would have been a great story to share here in that type of district. We can physically bring back a lot of this area to show back some of the history of our past and encourage some of this, just like you see in these photographs, encouraging the old charm of being able to walk into a physical colonial seaport. That would be actually based here, and it's our main history. This again is some of the slide is showing you more of the colonial seaport back in that day. You would have seen some of the wharf and the types of buildings of ship building. They would have had sails. They would have had locations for all types of types of for food and things when people come in and using for oysters. So you'll see a great thing here in this picture is a lighthouse. Imagine in Brantford we don't have a lighthouse a structure. You would think that we should encourage some type of lighthouse structure that we all take a photograph here in Brantford. I'm going to go back one more now on this point that we talked before, we'll share it a little bit more with you, is the, the new Bittersweet Village, okay, Artisan Park, that's part of this main village district. Encourage people from people who make jewelry, again, bags, you could be making a beautiful photographs, watercolors, pottery, all the types of stuff that you do, it'd be encouraged to be in these types of locations. Again, it, it, one thing I've told is Bittersweet's gone, we'll rebuild it. It's going to be in this area. We'll have those types of physical locations and colonial type buildings that make sense for the artisans and the colonialists at that time. One other great thing that we got to bring in here is the seniors. We have beautiful, beautiful um, location here in Brantford of attracting seniors and we have over 7,500 seniors that live here in Brantford. Well, we as a state, if you look at the numbers, Connecticut is not where you come to retire. It's sad that it is, and we do have so many senior citizens, that this village is encouraging seniors to want to live in Brantford. We could create the senior living. We'll be able to create different types of programs and giving them the housing that we do need here. Also is part-time jobs. They want a job. This would be great for them to be able to have a little part-time job. These would be great little locations for them to be able to take the bus right to work, be able to utilize all of the services of what the village is in physically creating an incredible lifestyle that we have here in our town for all different ages. But seniors would also be encouraged to be able to physically work and be located here in Artisan Park in the Bittersweet Village. This is another location that we have on the map that we are just describing a few minutes ago. It's just more of a sketch time drawing. You'll see a lot more of the types of vis visitor, sorry, the, the village buildings that we would be creating on um, the scale. So we a lot of dorms, a lot of roof lines. You see physical older buildings that would have been back in the day. And this is one other air location that we're encouraging in part of this. It's called Merchant Square, as I described before. This is making Brantford is a destination. We cannot keep saying that enough. Keep saying it, keep saying it. Brantford is a destination. If it becomes a destination, that's why the marinas would be full with boats and people can't wait to eat here and live here and come visit here. It's controlled in one area. Brantford is 22 square miles. We're talking approximately maybe 400, 300 acres of Brantford that is inside Brantford Village. This is, it's not the entire town, okay? So this is a little location that's taking the core and the hub of what is sharing with the world to physically bring in an economic development location to pay our bills, pay for our new schools, pay for the best things in Brantford that we want to have down the road. This is the business plan that makes it all possible. So remember, Brantford is a destination. This again is Merchant Square. You'll see many of the great locations that we're looking to encourage here for all the artisans and crafters in this beautiful location. You'll see in this slide a great, beautiful presentation of a type of architecture and types of encouragement of showing you the types of 
doors that would be created. Instead of seeing a physical signs in the front, there's signage that we would be able to want to control the types of look. We want to create the type of architecture that you have inside these types of facilities. What goes on inside? That's the material, that's let people do what they need to. It's the outer core shell and having an architecture review board for this actual district would be a totally encouragement. They're showing we already know what we want built. We already know the types of facilities that we're looking to have. All we do is from business to business, we switch the types of signs and the types of things on a smaller scale that us shares on a more, this destination, you, you, you'll get a map. You'll understand all the types of stores that are located in here. These are stores that are utilized and promoted throughout the entire Bradford Village Foundation. All of the information that would be shared in here is available to public and people. But again, keeping the architecture, clean, cut, the types of period buildings they would have had in the day, and physically you're seeing, that is a strip mall of our era. <laughs> That doesn't look like one, but that is a strip mall of this, of this entire development. We talked a few minutes ago about the Folk Art Museum. The Folk Art Museum is another encouragement of bringing in the Brantford Art Center. Um, another facility that I'm looking upon and I want to share more on another program, another idea, but the Brantford um, Art is incredible. We have an incredible people in town who have this talent and we do need to enhance it and show it more. We don't have a museum and this would be one of the greatest things we can build inside this village area. It's a physical museum and a folk art museum would be an incredible time period for that area. So this is the folk art museum. Artisan Park in Brantford Village again. Another great picture just to share people visiting, living, wearing period hats as you see the boy in the middle there coming with their family sharing it underneath incredible buildings of brick the types of architecture that we would have had back in those days. Um, some of the things we would brick, we would actually have more wood as this is some of the pictures you're seeing again are from the south. But again, we would have a lot more of that ambiance that we're sharing here in this building. People of village living, being able to come inside Brantford and you can live here too. You don't have to just visit it. It's a great story and it's something to share with everybody. Here's another picture again of a sign, again the Merchant Square and the gallery, the painting and the sculptures. Then on this slide here we're going to go into is um, the Brentford Village signs that you'd see based around town showing some of the images of the village and the visitor center. We're inside here you have a, just a few bullets we'll go over real quick on the visitor center. You can learn more about Brentford history. You'll be able to have your, your hub for your transportation center. We'll be able to discover your own ancestry. So. I don't know where I came from. I don't know where my great grandfather is. We would be able to have the logs, the information, the, the accessibility to all that information and they'll have a staff in the physical location of the visitor center to help you learn. Just like when you go to New York to learn about Ellis Island, you'd be able to learn your past history here as people who live in Brantford. And also we would be able to encourage to learn from outside the area if you came from Italy and which boat, if you did come on the Mayflower, you'd be able to learn more about your past history and find more information available to you through the technology that would be able in the facility. You can explore an 18th century village. Again, the 1700 period is where we're sort of coring a lot of this information and it's great to be able to share and be able to walk it on a normal day, just walk right inside. Don't need a ticket. Outdoor street theater, we shared this before again, encouraging people to see and explore your history as outdoor characters and actors would be in period in costumes and physically be able to share with you fife and drum, you'll have the red coats, you'll have the colonialists, you'll have a lot more of our main leaders back in the day walking the town. Horse drawn carriages rides, we'll be able to take a horse and carriage ride around town. Um, this would be encouraged in Brantford Village as we don't have taxis. You would have more of the typical lower impact neighborhood. You'd be able to enjoy a great day here in Brantford. Many days, a week. We want you here all we want you to be here for a month. <laughs> rent a rent a cottage. And again, so much more. So this would be part of the Brantford Visitor Center. Again, this would be part of Artisan Park. Again, the, again as we tell you, brick walks, beautiful landscaping, smaller buildings, two, three businesses in each of the actual locations. This is what the artisans have asked for and this is what they should get. 
Again, King's Tavern. King's Tavern was existing. This was here, it was located on Main Street where again, around where Richland is today. This would have been kind of the location. King's Tavern was on King's Highway. It was one of the main taverns back in the day of the time when Daniel Swain and their family was here, they encouraged it and built it. So they have also their own beer shops. You'll see that in this graph that's coming up, but this would be part of the King's Tavern. King's Tavern was located here in 1700s in Brantford on King's Highway. Here's another beautiful sketch. What a great period. It's just a great time and a beautiful buildings back in those days. And I sure wish I could see it today. Before and after, here's a great photograph of partially of what Main Street would have been looking like back in that era, down in that area. And that would be a sketch of what it could look like today. Here's another photograph of another type of colonial building that would have been back in the period. Absolutely, like I said, these would actually be for um, timeshares. So, or some type of vacation home rentals that you could rent out. Physical locations, you'll see multiple. It's almost like a condo, but this condo looks like this. <laughs> Here's another picture again, if we share you, of Brantford Village and also of Merchant Square. We talked about this before. What's better than visiting Brantford? Living here. That is a great slogan and topic. I mean, it absolutely is so true. Why are we not encouraging people to just not only just come and stay here for the day, stay here overnight. Want to live here? Live here. This village is different from what it would be back in Colonial Williamsburg. You come and visit, you actually be able to live here. These buildings are more how we base it. We're not demolishing, we're preserving, we're encouraging, we're making sure every building that's in that area stays where it is, how it is, it rebuilt and structured, or if we need to move new structures in or rebuild new structures of colonial period look that is what we're encouraging but again there's nothing better than living in where you're visiting here's another picture of again of uh, the king's highway this is of the fife and drum you would see this like i said before we're sharing and walking through the main center town area here this again is off the visitor center heading down into Brantford village mentioned it a few minutes ago, vacation homes and timeshares. Great business. We don't see that here in Brantford as much. We do see people renting homes. One thing to encourage in this point is a single structure like you're seeing in front of you is a typical Cape Cod. Um, that would physically be someone's home and it would be physically rentable. So you could physically live in it, or if you encourage to want to come into economic development or real estate development here in Brantford, and you wish to build a colonial type looking structure that we're looking for inside this village district, like this one you're seeing, there you go, you could build one and you could now own a home and be able to rent it off here in Brantford Village. One of the main things we had inside is a great, this is of the Colonial Williamsburg Inn back in Colonial, in, um, back in, in Williamsburg, Virginia. But this is the type of building that we physically would be able to core in the main center of our village, Brantford Village, and the physical location where people can not only just come and stay at a major hotel, it's a location based right in the center of the Merchant Square, right in the middle of Brantford Village. It's right in the district where you can enjoy the great hospitality of what is Brantford in one physical great location building. We talked a few minutes ago coming to this village to go shopping. Coming to Brantford Village to see theater. Bringing your family to enjoy the day. Nothing better than seeing a little boy smile. And being part of it. You want to be part of the history? We want you to share it with us. You share your life, we'll share our life here on Brantford Village. This is part of our presentation packets. We have eight different design packets that you're available to you. Um, this is the living packet on part of Merchant Square. It'll share you some of the actual information. The drawings that you see on the bottom is actual drawings of what we were talking before. 
when I went to the town hall to find the, the deed rights in the land of all of the types of people that were living here in the 1700s and what was happening down in that area period of where the Daniel Swain house, this is what was King's Highway back on the bottom of the thing. You'll see the buildings and the structures, not one of them exists today except partially the Daniel Swain house which is transformed to the Harrison house today but these types of structures was lining the street of Kings Highway which between Lincoln Avenue all the way to where Cherry Hill Road is Cherry Hill and um, home places today along Main Street and again this is the back of the packet it'll show you more of the actual town seal up in the left hand corner and again our logo here is Brantford Village and again the Merchant Square and all of the village district that we shared with you tonight here's another quick expanded drawing of the village of the colonial homes here again along Kings Highway so again thank you thank you for listening to the Brantford Village presentation it's now up to you. It's in time for you to now tell me and anybody else in town if you wish to move forward in seeing Bradford create an incredible new life, creating us a brand new heartbeat that we have not seen here in years, creating a new place that people would can't wait to move into, be part of, get a job, work, encourage, invest, want to be part of. It's all available to us at Bramford Village, and I would love to bring out more information, share with you more public hearings, give you out more information, and keep showing you more and more presentations, drawings, and architectural information that is available to you. It's up to you now. If you wish to share and be part of the Bramford Village Foundation to create what is Bramford Village, love to learn more, see more, draw more, be part of more. All of this kind of information is available. I've worked very hard on getting my mind set on a great success for this town of Brantford. It's something that's missing, something that we need to encourage a little bit more to physically bring the new way of turning economic development the way we do things, encourage our lives to grow longer and better in this town called Branford. Um, thank you very, very much. I'm JC Wyatt, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation of Branford Village. And again, remember, it's now up to you.